I'm so pleased to be here. And I want to talk a little bit about a organization and the evolution of an organization that is right here in this community that is all about creating a blue zone. I want to thank the TEDx people for putting this guy ahead of me. <laughs> I don't know how you figured it out, but you did a great job. Uh, I'm with the Beach Cities Health District, and the district has a, a very kind of different history, and some people know about it, some people don't. Uh, but in the 1950s, uh, there was a lot of talk, even as far back as the 20s, that in the, our community, there should be a community hospital. And back in that day, I, I'll summarize a lot of information by simply saying to you that in that day, health care was not a business. Health care was something that a community did with its community. And the community back in that day decided we needed a community hospital and built what was the old South Bay Hospital. It's the building that's behind the staff members right here. And it was built, the group that did the whole hospital started their meetings here in Manhattan Beach for five years. Five elected officials met at City Hall and went through all the work it took to get this group going. By the 1990s, healthcare had become a business. And this little hospital couldn't compete with the other two powerhouses in the community, which was Little Company and Mary and Torrance Memorial. Wonderful facilities. The doctors that were at this little hospital, run by this little government agency called Beach Cities Health District, fled to the other hospitals. At that time, it was who could have the best equipment, who could give the doctor the best deal, who could put the whole thing together. And this elected board of officials at the Beach Cities Health District was sitting in a 200-bed facility with about 15 patients. And people in the community walking around with a card in their back pocket saying, don't take me to South Bay Hospital. Some of you know about those cards? Anybody was here during that day? And the board decided at that time that they needed to close the hospital. Well, there was an economic reality that you close the hospital, but if you close the whole facility down and the funding, it would go back to the county of Los Angeles. Now, I'll tell you, once money goes to the county of Los Angeles, <laughs> it doesn't really come back to Manhattan Beach for the most part. It would be a rare day. So this group decided over time, in an evolution of time, to look at a possibility of thinking that perhaps we should not be invested in acute care or when people are desperately ill and need hospitalization. What if we as a community could be invested in keeping people as healthy as we can in the first place? What if? And I really appreciate what Linda had to say up here earlier because she was talking about how many years it can take people's attention to get into a healthcare arena to think clearly about it as they have about asbestos. So this group came together, and in 1998, when the last group tried to run that hospital, this whole effort started. Let's keep the community healthy in the first place. Wow, is that as simple as it could be? This is not rocket scientists. This is such a simple, simple concept. 80% of all progressive illnesses are preventable. The kinds of things the previous speaker was talking about, heart disease, cancers, et cetera, they're preventable. Could we, I challenge you today, could we be the next blue zone? I think it's very possible. And I want to tell you some of the exciting things that are going on right now in our community that you may not know about that are blue zone activities. We're organized uh, at the district to work with three different age groups. So a new thing that started in January of this year is called Grow Well. And we have a young woman who's putting together with a group of volunteers all the resources that they can find to help a new parent. How hard is it when you're a brand new parent with a brand new baby at 3 o'clock in the morning and the baby's colicking and crying and you've been up all night? How many of you have been there? A lot of you to know how dangerous is this, what should I really do? 
Grow Well is an entity that's starting to evolve for brand new parents so that they have, their, have other brand new parents to reach out to. So that you can call Grow Well and you can get just about any resource that you want. It's starting right now at the Beach Cities Health District. It's looking for volunteers. Another great piece that is going on is just understanding the health of our community. To us, to get to that blue zone, what, what are the areas that aren't very blue? And right now, it's our children. Now, Manhattan Beach, Redondo Beach, Hermosa Beach, they tell interesting stories about children's health. Seven, maybe 6% of the children in the Manhattan Beach Unified School District are considered overweight or obese. It's quite a few kids. I think it's quite a few kids. Every kid that is, to me, is a concern. They're going to shoot through all those years and die very young. Matter of fact, that population is considered to be the population that we know statistically will die younger than their parents. And it's the first time for many, many generations. Now catch on to this. Manhattan Beach has the lowest obesity rate in the state. So on one, one level you go, wow, isn't that great? On another level you go, but what about those 7% kids? Another population in Manhattan Beach we worry about even more is the high school level kids. We live in Manhattan Beach in what I call the overflow. We have tremendous abundance. That abundance sometimes brings its own pressures. Our high school kids, particularly juniors and seniors, drink and drug far more than other kids. And I've done whole other presentations about that. By the time they're juniors, they're a very accomplished set of kids. They're, just go to coordinating council with me every month. See these students of the month. They will blow you away with their academics, their brilliance, their understanding of civic organizations. And the research for affluent communities and alcohol and drugs and kids is very interesting. These kids in middle school will use less than other communities. When they're freshmen, they'll use less or not at all. When they're sophomores, they'll use less or not, a wall, or not at all. Junior year. They take the big dive. And with this population, it's about binging. It's not what you're going out and doing at night or having some wine. It's binging. It's drinking and drugging until you're sick. And that's a concern that's out of the blue zone for us in Manhattan Beach. With adults, we're looking at obesity issues. We're looking at more fruits and vegetables and all the programs we can do with that. But I want to spend a little bit of time talking about seniors. When he talked about isolation, in Manhattan Beach today, when you drive up and down the streets, you can see some glorious homes. I like looking at them. Some incredible spaces. And then you'll see this little tiny beach house, kind of just tucked in there. And maybe the grass is being done, but you can just tell nothing's been done. You've seen them around. And in those little homes often is a senior there is a substantial number of them in Manhattan Beach that have an income of less than $20,000 a year. They do have their real estate. Their kids often live on the East Coast, the Midwest, all these places. And they are socially isolated. There are some of the greatest things happening right now with that population in our community. At the district right now, we have been able to work through the community's goodness we have over 700 volunteers. As far as I know, it's one of the largest volunteer organizations in the South Bay. Over 200 of those volunteers are committed to helping those seniors in those little houses get their needs met. And I know he talked a lot in the last talk about longevity. I want to talk about quality of life. As you age and you get more and more isolated, you see less and less of other people. It begins to shape what your life is like every day. Just having one person come in your home changes your day. It may change your whole week. We have a person who's here today who's one of our volunteers. I talked to him at the break. And he is one of our errand volunteers. One of the hardest things when you're a senior, and I myself can't imagine it for myself, is when you cannot drive anymore. And it's one of the things that can lead you, that and a hip fracture, to be in an institution. 
We have so many people in our community who are now going into these folks' homes so that they can have their day changed, so that they can have a quality of life that can be very remarkable. This particular volunteer is a shopper. And he goes to this woman's home. And this is one of the things I want to talk about. He is a perfect fit for this person. And that's one of the things about organizational life. You've got to find the right fit for the right person helping in a community. And when you find those right fits, amazing things happen. I don't know Linda that was up here earlier, but I would suggest to you that maybe she's the right woman at the right time with the right fit. Maybe hundreds of people saw that asbestos problem before you, but there was something in your vision, you saw that, and you've made a difference. With this volunteer who's here today, this woman that he goes and visits now for over four years, she doesn't really want to shop with him. She just wants somebody to go get her stuff. And he's able to get exactly what she wants every week and bring it to her home. She loves him. We have one person that we work with every week. She's 90 years old. She's been volunteering in this community for over 40 years. And guess what? She needs help now. Now that's a humbling experience. And one of our volunteers now is working with her because someone in her apartment building wants to get her kicked out of the building for all kinds of reasons. Our volunteer is who's stepping in with her to be family to her. And that's what I'm suggesting to you today, that every single one of us, we have a gift, we have a vision, we have a place that we can be to make this blue zone happen in a very amazing way in this community, and it's already starting. You saw the lessers up here. They're amazing. One of the things I want to say about this world of trying to create a better place in our own community is, one, you have to have the right fit. The second thing that's really important is to know that even a little bit is good. You don't have to change the whole world. Just do your small part, whatever that is. The third thing I think is real important in these blue zones, these worlds that we can have, is the whole concept of ego. It's not important to have your name on it. It's not important to have your picture in the paper. It's just important that we all show up together. It's not important to drive in one idea. Somebody else might have a better idea. So when you saw the lessers up here, I can tell you some leaders like that get very, very tired. And they're waiting for some of you that are sitting in this room to come up so they can give you the mantle, give it to you so that you can pick it up. They already thought out the hard stuff. They made the big mistakes, and they want you to go keep literally running the race. And so we don't need a brand new idea sometimes. We need somebody who will take the old idea and do it as good as the other people did. So that's really the blueness that we can create in Manhattan Beach. We have a very, I don't know if you realize this, unique opportunity right now about good fit. Do you know that in our community in six months, at some point, we're going to have a new city manager, a new fire chief, and a new superintendent of schools. All in the next six months. How important is it for our community to get the right fit? And how could that fit change this whole community in a very positive way? Uh, I'm going to close today with just a comment about somebody. I've, what is the Japanese word they were talking about you use when you were, whatever? Yeah, that. <laughs> There's someone at our facility who has that, and I just, I love him. His name is Richard. I've known him since I've been at the health district. He comes to the health district every week. He comes to the health district on a certain day of the week. He goes into the cafe at, we have at the health district. He eats the same food. I see him, he has the same cookie. Same kind of cookie every week. He goes to the front lobby of our building, and his job every day is he waits at the front, and he pushes people who come in who need assistance who are in wheelchairs. And he pushes them all over the building. He does this every week, every week, every week, every week. Richard is 92 years old. 
Richard is living on the right side of the wheelchair. He is living on the right side of the wheelchair. What I ask for you today, from what you heard from the previous speakers this morning, live on the right side of the wheelchair. He shows up. He does good. He keeps involved. He sees people who care about him weekly. And we've seen people here today who have a vision. And that's what we want for our community here. Thank you very much.